Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 102. Hey, if you want to download this uh, PowerPoint or the Excel file, uh, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Excel Finance class section. This is for Chapter 10. Just a quick note about efficient market hypothesis. Efficient market hypothesis says that financial assets in uh, exchanges like the New York Stock Exchange are efficiently priced and this means that at any moment in history the uh, asset has the correct price and this is because of competitive competition among investors seeking out information anytime there's new information it assimilates into prices quickly right so that's the whole theory the problem with this is is evidence in history uh, shows that this markets are not efficient in the short term now there's something called strong efficient uh, which means all public and private information is reflected in security price. Semi-strong means all public info is reflected in security price. If true, financial statement analysis and studying current mortgage default rates is futile. The problem is people study this information all the time, right? Now, when new information comes out, people see that and then they adjust their estimates for the stock price. Uh, but people do this kind of stuff all the time and continue to do it. So there's that seems like some evidence to suggest that markets are not as efficient as people would like to think. Weak form means past security price is reflected in security in the security price. If this is true, searching for patterns in historical prices is futile. People do this all the time. It's called technical analysis, which means markets are probably not efficient. Um, there's something called herd mentality or animal uh, spirits, which Fisher, Keynes, and Minsky all mention. It just refers to the tendency of people to follow certain trends in the, in the market, even when the trend is unreasonable. Think of the internet stocks in the 1990 and housing prices. Oftentimes, financial market bubbles are fueled by firms and individuals borrowing money to buy up assets. Right, so they're borrowing a lot of money. The increased demand for the assets increases the price of the asset. Right, so they're borrowing lots of money, buying, buying, buying. That that pushes up the price. The increased value of the asset allows people to borrow more because they have more collateral. In essence, this easy credit can contribute to asset price increases that do not reflect underlying fundamentals. Just think of the housing crisis. Right, all you had to do is do the present value of future rent cash flows, discount them back, and you could see that prices uh, for mortgage-backed securities were massively high. Uh, still further, the idea that markets always price financial assets correctly has been proven false a number of times in history. We just mentioned one great example. Uh, here's another specific detail from the current uh, housing crisis. You know, default rates on houses were available between 2005 and 2007. It's all public information and out there. And yet, the prices on mortgage-backed securities did not adjust downward until 2007, right? And by that time, people have had invested and misallocated resources. And, and in the long run, people got really hurt. So the idea that markets always price financial assets correctly is just not true. Um, but, however, in the long run, markets tend to be efficient, right? Because eventually the internet stocks and the mortgage-backed securities did fall. But in the short term, uh, prices can, can uh, not be correct. And as a result, resources are allocated um, to projects that are not the most efficient project. So that's just a little uh, rant about efficient market hypothesis. All right, uh, see you next video.